Hi everybody, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop and I have a thrift haul to show you. It's a small one, but I want to go ahead and show you so, because um, I have a tendency to get these things listed and then I pack them away until I sell them. So let me show you what I picked up today and a little bit yesterday. I'll start over here, <laughs> I will start over here with these two uh, platters. Um, this is called, this pattern is called uh, Heavenly Days and it was manufactured between 1956 and 1964 I believe. The mid 50s to the mid 60s. And these are two platters. Uh, this is Vernon Ware, made in California. Uh, and these two platters should, um, I paid two dollars for both of them and they should sell for between 15 and 18. Uh, I like Vernon Ware uh, from California. I like the designs. It's a really nice mid-century design. Um, and speaking of Vernon Ware, I will also, well, because it was manufactured for about 10 years, uh, that's one stamp on the back. And uh, this is another way that it was also marked on the back. This one, uh, Vernon Ware, safe in the oven and the dishwasher. This is the mark that's in the 60s when some people had dishwashers. Um, and uh, that's the older one. And speaking of uh, Vernon Ware from California, I have this little guy out because he just sold yesterday. This was on um, either my first or second thrift haul video. This is another piece of Vernon Ware, which I have to pack up and ship out, but just to show you that this is still another uh, mark. And that one is, this mark is even earlier, and I think this one is the late 40s. This little sugar bowl was called Gingham is the pattern, um, and that has to get shipped out. So let's see, back here uh, is two plates that I picked up. Um, this is just a really nice little 19, late 50s, early 60s grandmother plate. Uh, it's not marked on the back. It does have two holes on it so you can hang it. And I guess, don't, isn't it, a, do you have fond memories? I do, of going into kitchens, you know, when I was a kid. And these kinds of plates were always over cabinets or the stove or the kitchen sink. It just kind of made an old-fashioned kitchen. Um, an old-fashioned kitchen is not complete without these kind of plates, I think. So that was a dollar. This I bought for a friend of mine uh, who is a big presidential fan. Uh, I thought it was hilarious that they put lipstick on uh, Ike. Isn't that funny? <laughs> um, and uh, of course, we can thank Mamie Eisenhower for the pink bathrooms. This was America's first family in the 1950s, Dwight, Eisen Dwight and uh, Mamie Eisenhower. No marks on the back. I paid $4 for that, really, because I'm going to give it to somebody. Uh, but these actually sell online for 8 bucks, maybe $10. Bucks. Uh, somebody with a 1950s kitchen, if they're decorating it and they want to be true to form, they should have that. All right, over here, as you know, I have an experiment, or at least if you watch my videos, you know I have an experiment. I'm starting a new uh, group called uh, Anniversary Plates, and um, what I'm going to do is pick up 10 pieces, put them in the shop, and then stop, and I'm going to wait and see over a three-month period, you know, how they sell. This one, I already showed you once before, I think last week or maybe the week before. And then since then, believe it or not, in all different shops, I found the same plate. This one is a little smaller. So that's probably a 12 inch and that's probably a 10 inch. They all have the um, Left in Japan sticker on the back. So late 60s. So now I have two plates. I found a cup and a saucer that match that design, and a trophy, well, a vase. And it has also got the label on the back. It's funny, I don't know if, you know how when you buy a new car, or this is what people say, they buy a new car and all of a sudden they start seeing all these cars that are identical to theirs. Maybe that's what's happening, but 
I found all of these 25th anniversary pieces very inexpensively and at different shops. And the very last one I purchased uh, earlier today, and I've got to hold it up here so you can see. It's um, like an apothecary, well, not really. It's a glass jar, and it's not showing up well, but it also says 25th anniversary. So I will let you know, stay tuned, and I'm gonna let you know how this experiment's working out with these anniversary plates. We'll see what happens. Hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Okay. Uh, now, I did a Christmas video a couple days ago, and no, I didn't forget to put these in it. These are things that I've picked up since then, just within the last couple of days. I couldn't believe it. I found another one of these ceramic trees it does have its base, but the base is somewhere else, and I can't get to it right now. So this is a nice, um, I think maybe about a 14-inch tree um, with all of its little, little guys. And there is a place on the top for a, a star. Not all of these have holes in the top. I was also happy to find these four. Um, oh, the tree, I did pay $10 for the tree. Those, these trees sell for $60 up to $150. The really, really tall trees that are hard to find, like 30 inch trees, they can sell for $200, $300. It really is amazing. And there are no chips on this at all. These four girls uh, and these two little Santas were all in a plastic bag for $2.99 for all of them. So the two little matching, the two little Santas are, uh, you, there's a little hook on them, so come here, behave. So they can be hung on a tree, you see? And then made in Japan, and it's funny that originally it was 55 cents. Uh, so these two little guys were cute, and then these four back here, uh, and they all have uh, Japan on the bottom of them. And a lot of times these figurines did come in sets of four, uh, so I feel like uh, that's all four of them. They're all in excellent shape. It is amazing how well these things sell. Um, the four of these here, I could probably get 20, maybe 25 bucks for them. It's just incredible how these little things sell, especially if you have like a whole set of four. Now, I don't know why this one has a blue dress and her sisters are all in green, so she's bougie. She has to be, you know, there's always one, right? Anyway, she's got the blue dress. Everybody else has the green. It's good. We won't hold it against her. Okay, uh, let's go over to this because this is nothing exciting, but it's three lids. They are all Pyrex. They are all marked. Pyrex did a great job. See? I don't know. Can you see? Um, and people love lids. They break lids. They chip lids. There are no cracks or chips in any of these lids. So there's one. And these are some, these are heavy lids. Another larger casserole lid and another, and a square casserole lid. So kind of square, kind of, uh, oval and then uh, a circle. So I'll probably put all, those lids were $2 for three of those lids and I'll probably just bundle all of those together and do one sale for three miscellaneous Pyrex lids. Or I'll keep them and put them on my own Pyrex. Back here, uh, four vintage tins. On an average, they were about $3 each. Um, my favorite one is this. Are the ones from the '30s because uh, I this I love this color, the cream and green color, radiant mop. Just I love the graphics on it. Uh, and then this one down here, wafers. Then there's uh, a Bachman pretzel tin, and uh, the the tobacco tin. What was really cool about this tin. Can I do this with one hand? Well, let me do it like this. What's neat about this tin is um, 
Look at the paper insert that's still in there. I mean, how cool is it that that has been in there all this time and it never fell out? So, that was sweet. All right, so four tins, and I don't know, I'll probably, um, I haven't decided um, what I'm gonna put on the tins, but again, I paid about $4 each for them on an average, and uh, they'll probably sell for between 12 and 18. I'll probably, that's, I'll probably put more on this one because I like the color. The, these, that one and that one will be the two highest. That's pretty common. And I think the pretzel tin is pretty common, but they're easy to ship. These are two uh, George Briard or George Briard. I'm not sure how he pronounces his name. I showed you in one of my haul videos a uh, chip and dip set by this particular designer that and I just picked that up maybe two weeks ago that was in the forbidden fruit pattern this pattern is called Persian garden and these are two large well this one these are matching divided trays and um, they are really nifty I have to hold it up here so you can see um, that pattern as I said is called Persian garden uh, George Berard signs almost everything and that, there is his signature right there. Again, it's spelled G-E-O-R-G-E-S, so I might be pronouncing it wrong. Wrong, And I don't know if the last name is Briard or Briard, so I'm just calling him George Briard. <laughs> I'm sure some of you are out there laughing at my ignorance, but well, I don't know. So you can see it's kind of a textured glass, a molded glass, and these are divided trays. Uh, this was, he was a designer in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. He died in 2005. He was born in Poland, came to Chicago in 1937, and studied at the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, came up with the name George Briard just to put on the things that he made. And he's very, his glassware is sort of, it's, it's always very busy. There's a lot going on. Uh, and he loves all this gold this one back here, I just can't believe when I saw, I knew that it was his work when I saw it because it's so, let me not drop it. Uh, it's huge. And there are no chips, no cracks on this at all. This thing is a monster. Um, shipping it, yeah, I don't know. So let me be real careful with this. Put this back down. Um, he died in 2005. I paid $4 for both of these. And um, these great big trays, um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'll, I'll probably sell them together because they are the same pattern. Uh, and, whoa, sorry. And I might get um, Maybe $35 for the two of them, which isn't a lot, but I'll tell you what, keep your eye out for, for this style and for things that are signed by him. If you ever see his tumblers, uh, they're called Name Your Poison, and they have a skull and crossbones on them. It's barware. Um, those sets of those can sell for $150, $200, $300. It's, I think, his most popular design. So do a little research and start looking for them because if you find them, you'll make big bucks. And then the last thing I want to show you is uh, if I can get them out of here. Let me move this out of the way. Um, I have two bags. I'm not going to empty everything. These are uh, prisms. And this particular cut, the, I'll just take one out. And I have about 75 of these. Uh, and the 75 prisms that I have are going to sell for about $150. This is called uh, Gothic Cut. The way this particular prism is cut, the way the glass is cut. Uh, it's in a triangular form here, which is probably not showing up very well. Uh, and these were not reproduced the way um, 
if you ever see these, you know, do your research before you buy them. I paid five bucks for about 75 of these and they sell for about $25 for a set of 10 to 15. So I'm going to do really well on these. Uh, very popular on Victorian lamps, chandeliers and that kind of thing. They're really beautiful. They're, they're very reflective. And uh, I'm going to be breaking these up into lots. And uh, that was a good buy. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you today. Let me back up. And, um, oh, these aren't supposed to be in there. I am eating, do you like these? I love Necco wafers. It's like my favorite candy. I know, like, all my friends are like, are you kidding, those are nasty, but I love these things. So, this is what I've been munching on. All right, it's time for me to get busy listing. Thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next time. It's Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying so long for now.